Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Cornerstone Faculty Overview. My name is Valerie Bowden Allen, and I'm a coordinator at Professional and Organizational Development. I am joined by Mr. Martin Powell. He is the Human Resource Specialist and Primary Cornerstone Administrator. Together, we're going to tag team as facilitators in this session. Did Good you find, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Martin. Martin? Yep, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, should you find that you are not able to navigate along with us, uh, we ask that you would please input uh, your information in the chat box and we will follow up with you next week to schedule a one-on-one -on -one to ensure that you are able to successfully navigate each component of this session. Depending on the questions that we receive in the chat box, uh, we will try to answer a few of them at the end of the session. Um, but if we are not able to get to all of those questions, we will create a frequently asked questions resource and submit a follow up to all participants. So here are our, are our learning objectives for the next 40 minutes. We will learn how to perform some basic operations in Cornerstone, and we will also identify some personal and professional benefits of Cornerstone. Cornerstone is the college's talent management system for professional development and performance management all in one system. But for this session, we are only going to focus on the learning components. There are a variety of learning opportunities in Cornerstone to support your personal and professional development. We have on-demand asynchronous sessions and we have instructor-led sessions that are synchronous with instructors. And we also have books and videos. As we move forward uh, prior to the navigation of the system, um, we would like you to think about how you can leverage Cornerstone um, personally as well as professionally and in the classroom with your students. According to Sherm and Forbes, Employers want students with, with uniquely human skills because they feel that students are not learning soft skills in college that they need to be successful in the workplace. They identified some areas such as adaptability, problem solving, empathy, collaboration, critical thinking, and communication, just to name a few. As faculty, we can always take a closer look at how we can assist our students to be not only academically ready as it relates to the content knowledge, but we can also assist students to employ a variety of skills essential for their overall career success in the workplace. So student success is one of our primary areas of focus in Prince George's Community College's strategic plan. Our students' persistence depends not only on their academic preparedness, but it also depends on their ability to integrate those soft skills, not only in their first semester of planning for academic success, but also in other courses along their career path. So as we move into the navigation of Cornerstone, we really want you to consider how you can leverage Cornerstone to design and create optimal conditions for our students to achieve their academic personal, as well as their long-term career success. So before we begin to navigate Cornerstone, let's take a look at the Cornerstone tutorial. Introduction to the Cornerstone Learning Management System. The home landing page. Home and learning are the two main content areas for all employees. The home landing page will allow you to see A, your transcript, B, featured training, and C, pending evaluations. Search for training, option one. In the search box in the top right corner of the home page, Input the name of the training course in the search box, then click the search icon. All courses and training sessions available by that title will populate. Option two, browse for training. 
On the home landing page, scroll over the learning tab to view drop down options. Click the browse for training option to view all of the training classes listed by number and alphabetical order. On the browse for training page, you can find different ways to search for training. The left side of the page displays those options. We have the option to view and select training sessions by clicking on my subjects. These are topics of interest. Featured, those courses are highlighted by professional development. Popular, these courses are frequently selected. And newest, there are various icons for the types of training available. Online classes, events, curriculum, and material. You also have additional search options, date range, full calendar view, and location. Once you find a course, click on its title. When you click the training title, the session will expand to allow you to view the session details, the number of available seats, as well as the dates and times of the class. Enroll in training. Martin, the screen has stopped. Will be available in the View Training Details drop down. Option two enroll in an online course. Go to the Learning tab to view drop-down options. Click the Browse for Training option. Select an online training course by clicking on its title. To enroll, click Request. Launch an online course. Once the online course is requested, click the Launch Action tab in your transcript. A new window will appear, directing you to a Skillsoft page. Click Play This Course. The menu and course overview will appear. Select the play icon and the video will start. Withdraw from a training class. To withdraw from a session, you can click Withdraw under your on the home page or you can go to the Learning tab drop-down. Select View Your Transcript. Click on the View Training Details drop-down box by the training class title in your transcript. Click Withdraw. The Withdrawal Registration page will appear. The Withdrawal Registration screen requires a justification for removing the class. To select a reason, click the drop-down box under Withdrawal Options. Select the appropriate reason and click Submit. The withdrawal is complete when your transcript reflects the option to select session in the action drop down box by the class title. If you have canceled a session, new sessions will be available to select from your transcript under Select Session only if new sessions are available. If new sessions are not available, the training details will appear but the option to request will not. You may select the option, notify me of new sessions. View and print your transcript, option one. The home landing page will allow you quick access to the icon, your transcript, which allows direct access to your transcript and various action items depending on the training class status. Hover over the widget until the finger pointer option appears and then click. Option two. On the learning tab, there will be three options in the drop down view your transcript, events calendar, and browse for training. To open your transcript, hover over the My Learning tab and select View Your Transcript. In the transcript page, you can view details and request specific sessions. You can also withdraw from instructor-led training, launch online learning, complete training evaluations, 
and view training scores. The transcripts have action tabs linked to each training option on the right side of the class titles to show the class status, such as view training details, launch, expired, and open curriculum. On the transcript page, you will see your active courses by default. These are either courses in which you have self-enrolled, any mandatory training you've not yet completed, or any training sessions assigned to you by your supervisor. To see transcripts of courses you have already completed, select Completed from the drop-down menu. You can clean up your active listing by archiving a class you have decided not to take. To archive a requested course, select View Training Details, then select Move to Archive Transcript. Finally, select Archive. These courses will now appear on the Archived tab. Complete class evaluations. After attending an instructor-led session, you will be expected to complete an evaluation. Training sessions that require a class evaluation will be posted on the home landing page under pending evaluations. If an evaluation is posted, you will see evaluate. Click evaluate. When the survey opens, answer the supporting survey questions about the training session and click submit. If no evaluations are due, there will be no pending evaluation. So now we will begin to move into the navigating a cornerstone. So feel free to log in with us as we maneuver. Uh, should you find that you lag behind or you're having issues, please input that into the chat box and we will follow up with you. Okay. So now I am going to show you how to navigate to uh, Cornerstone using the PGCC uh, webpage. The first step would be to go to www.pgcc.edu, which would then take you to the main Prince George's Community College screen. At the top, you'll see a menu of different options you can choose from. The choice that you would need to make is My PGCC. I'll also note that some of you may have different resolutions on your screen, and it may actually look like this instead where instead of having the menus at the top, you'll see three white lines uh, signaling a menu option on the top right-hand side corner of your screen. If you click that, it'll bring down all of the necessary options you need to look for. Once again, uh, my PGCC is the choice that you would want to go with to move forward. Once here, you would enter your username at pgcc.edu, much in the same way you would with your Outlook uh, PGCC email. Once you are able to successfully sign in, you will be at the faculty and staff portal. Here, you'll see a bunch of icons uh, that you can choose from. The icon you will want to go with is Cornerstone. So you would click that to move to the Cornerstone welcome screen. So now that we are at the Cornerstone home landing page, uh, we just want you to take a look at the top ribbon. You have home, learning and reports. And Martin is proxying a page that will probably look more similar to what you see on your Cornerstone home landing page because he is an administrator.
So on the top ribbon, you will see home, learning, reports, and performance. This session is gonna take a look at home and learning. So as we review the home learning page, there are some widgets that will allow you to access your transcript quickly, the featured trainings. Keep in mind in the featured trainings area, it will only hold eight items on the home page. But if you select the widget above those items, it will open up the complete listing so that you will be able to see all sessions that are featured at Prince George's Community College. Also, we have pending evaluations. It is not a clickable widget, but should an evaluation um, be loaded in that section, it will be an option for you to evaluate. Once you evaluate that session, it will transition from your home page to your learner transcript. Also note the picture graphics on the home landing page. These are for quick and easy access and enrollment. So at this time, we will move toward uh, global search and I will give you the floor, Mr. Powell. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you that you can search for is an IOT or synchronous course. So what I'm going to type in here is mock as we created a mock class for the adjunct summit. You'll notice as I'm typing it in to the search bar, it's automatically bringing down a dropdown of choice that match that search. So once that mock class for adjunct summit appears, you would click that to continue. Once here at the event page, you'll see all of the available sessions for that particular course, uh, as well as the, abil the ability to view the details such as the date and time, as well as the location of said uh, session. So what you would need to do is next to that view details button, you'll see a down arrow which will bring up another set of menu options. And in order to sign up for that course, you need to click request. Once you click request, you'll see an alert on the lower left hand side confirming that you did successfully uh, register for that course. The second thing I wanna show is signing up for an online or asynchronous course. So if I typed in mockups, for example, it brings up a typical example of an online course. As with the uh, ILT or synchronous course, it automatically comes up in the drop down menu, whatever you're looking for in particular. And once you find that, you click that choice to move forward. With the online classes, uh, you would uh, see the description of the class or the course as well as an option to launch that course uh, to go right into it. So I'll click launch, uh, which for all Skillport related asynchronous courses, it'll bring up either a pop-up window or a new tab showing the overview description of the course, as well as any additional information, such as the time that that course would take to complete. You would also see that start course button, which would take you right into the course so that you can begin. Once you are finished with that course, you would then close the tab or the pop out and return back to the cornerstone screen. The next thing I wanna show you is in your transcript where those courses would sit, which as you saw in the video, you would hover over learning and click view your transcript. And here you'll see the courses that you had registered for. If you had already completed these courses, you'll notice that there's a button marked active that shows all of the courses you are currently taking. If you were to change that to completed, it would then switch to all the courses that you had successfully completed. Say in this case, these are courses that you did not want to take, then what you would do Next to the right of each course are a but is a button with a set of options. In this case, with the ILT or synchronous course, it would say view training. 
Next to that is a down arrow that would bring down some options, one of which allows you to withdraw from that course that you registered for. So I'll click withdraw, which brings up the withdraw registration page. Uh, it will then ask you to select the reason as to why you're withdrawing from the course. In this case, I'll just click other. You can leave comments as optional and then hit submit. Once you withdraw from the course, you'll see that the status on your active transcript has changed to withdrawn. Now, you probably would want to remove that course from your transcript completely, which there is an option to archive said course. To do so, hit that down arrow next to select session and click move to archive transcript. It will give you a prompt to, to make sure that you are sure that you want to archive it. You would click archive to move forward. And as you'll see, it's removed from your transcript, from your active transcript. Next, I want to take you to the Skillsoft books and videos. As you can see, I've already uh, added it to my transcript. But just to show you in the search bar, if you were to start with books, for example, it should bring up the option Skillsoft books and videos. So you would go ahead and click that. And just like with the uh, asynchronous course I showed you, you would then hit launch, which would take you into the Skillsoft books and videos window. We are now in the uh, Skillsoft portal for books and videos. And I have uh, created a few classes that I would like for us to preview and then also to just kind of show you how they can be helpful. Uh, the first book that we have is The Secret of Teams, What Great Teams Know and Do. So if you launch that, Martin, so you'll have to launch the book. Once you launch the book, you'll have the option to download the transcript or either uh, a PDF of that book. Um, so I selected this option because when I thought about faculty, uh, one of the things I thought about is how can you leverage Cornerstone, not only for your personal professional development, but also uh, for your students. So the option to download these books uh, in transcript form or PDF, they can be used when you assign group projects to your students, um, along with you know, incorporating some additional tools like uh, the stages of team development so that students understand the dynamics of team building. Next, we're gonna go into a video. The video that I have selected for us to preview is problem solving, the power of play. Problem solving, the power of play. So here you have to make sure that you transition from books to videos, from books to videos. And here, we're gonna launch this so you can see what this module actually looks like. And we're gonna play it for about two minutes. A large part of problem solving is about motivating the right people to become part of the solution. One of the key ways to do that is by gamifying problems in today's world. Let me tell you what I mean by that. When you're trying to solve a problem, you can tap into the power of play what does the power of play mean? Well, it's a way to design problems to make them fun and engage others to want to join in. It could be an ideation competition where you're allowing others to join in on solutions, but also get recognized in a new way. It could be uh, focused on solving specific procedural issues that specific leaders or managers are facing every single day, but not realizing that they're all dealing with them and could learn from each other differently. So let me give you an example of this. Duolingo 
is a language learning application. It's a business. And one of the things they realized is that they needed to tap into the power of play. So what they did is they created a language learning application where anyone can learn new languages from English to French. But what they did is they gamified it and they allowed anyone to play games. As they were going through those games, they would learn new languages. One of the key interesting things they asked themselves, though, is how do we use this problem to solve an entirely different problem at the exact same time? And the other problem they realized is that news websites like PBS and CNN needed to quickly translate their articles into different languages. So they brought those articles into their homework problems on the game. And today, millions of people who played Duolingo are not just learning new languages. They are translating news websites for the internet. Today, Duolingo has a revenue model with PBS, CNN, BuzzFeed, and many other news magazines. And what they're really doing is tapping into this entirely new way of bringing two problems together to identify a solution and engage stakeholders that would never have connected before. So great. So we chose this video because we thought that it could be helpful to faculty um, because you can use a resource like this to support student learning. You can ask your students to create a Kahoot that's related to the learning topic um, of a specific chapter and then you can have them to share that with the overall group in a Blackboard discussion. So that is going to conclude our navigation due to time purposes. Um, but I would like for you to consider as you move along that although our students uh, take past 1000 planning for academic success, which covers many of the topics that the employer concerns actually identified. Um, but I do hope that all faculty will incorporate some components of soft skills so that we can reiterate the importance of them to our students to aid in their academic and career success. If there are any questions, we are now going to be visiting the chat box. If there are any questions. Thank you, Gwendolyn Kelly, great ideas. Can you repeat the soft skills that were mentioned by Forbes? I can submit that, I will write that up and I will submit that out to you if, if that's okay. I'll send it out to the entire group. Um, I only listed a few of them, but there was a large array of topics. Um, how can you see the full list of courses available? Martin, can we show them how they can see the full list of courses available? Um, Talia, what we decided to do was to move through the search bar because it is the quickest way to locate sessions. So in the search bar, you can put in any topic from communication, collaboration, so on and so forth, and select search and those options will appear or you can go into the learning browse for training option. And just to add, um, Skillsoft's library is pretty uh, expansive. So it's a good chance any given learning object that you're looking for, you'll find. For example, if I were to search for, I wanted to learn how to use Adobe software it'll bring up different options that you can uh, take. Say I wanted to learn how to use Illustrator or Dreamweaver or so and so forth. So it's, it's a lot of different choices um, within Cornerstone. So you can, like uh, Ms. Valerie said, you can just search openly to see what's out there or you can go to that browse for training and just kind of just take a look and see everything they offer. And, and there are um, different categories set up within Browse for Training um, that allow you to kind of zero in a little bit better on the type of courses you're looking for, such as uh, asynchronous or synchronous courses, 
courses that deal with employee engagement. Obviously, the feature training is also available here as well. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of different uh, choices. Um, I do see Mr. Vincent is asking how to get to the archived items. If I were to go back to the view your transcript, the same place uh, that shows the active where you can change the completed, here you'll also see archived. And this is where you can find those archived courses. Now, okay, in logging into my PGCC, it is not synced with your PGC email when you are already in your PGCC email. Uh, no, and I know that is a bit odd, um, but the Outlook, it's weird because you can sign into my PGCC and from there you can go straight to your Outlook email, but you can't do the same way the other way around. I guess it's not connected in that way. So unfortunately you would have to sign in as you would your Outlook email, but you would have to do that separately to reach the faculty and staff portal. Um, I noted here that someone said, uh, Martin, did you talk about in logging in? Is that the one you just covered? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was trying to post in the chat box um, the question asked uh, by, let's see, who asked the question? By Gwendolyn. I did go in the chat box, but I'm not sure how it translated, but those topics are adaptability, problem solving, empathy, collaboration, critical thinking, and communication. Let's see what other questions, are there any other questions? Okay. How do I get to archived items? You covered that. Yes. Okay, Martin, can we show from the search bar um, on Cornerstone how easy it is to select a topic and see what modules are available? If you could type in um, adaptability. There's not very many. Choice. Let's type in communication. Communication, okay. Or listening skills. They're, they're actually, I know that there's modules. So there's definitely, looks like there's a, quite a few under communication. Also, this is one issue with global search. You want to make sure because it is showing all at the same time, including users, you can zero in on just trainings by clicking the training tab at the left side of the menu. And also on this screen, you can move the, move down to the bottom of the page and you can select show more if that's an option, if everything doesn't show, because sometimes it doesn't. Right. And so you can select class that classes that way. Martin, could you look up listening skills as well? We're just trying to home in on some modules that you could potentially use um, for classroom learning. Listening with skill, listening to improve communication, effective listening. There's also professional modules. So we're going to take one more look at the chat box. If we do not have any further questions, we are going to close out this session and give you a few minutes back before you are engaged in your next session. Okay, so there are no more questions. So at this time, we're going to close out the session and we would like to thank you um, for attending and thank you uh, for your support in this session. Have a great day and uh, continue to enjoy the 2020 Adjunct Summit.